I'd like to call the regular township board meeting for Chesterfield Township for Tuesday, October 25th, 2022 at 7 p.m. to order. Could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Berry, would you call the roll? Supervisor Kirsten. Here. Treasurer Elliott. Here. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Joseph. Here. Trustee Domingue. Here. Trustee Vosberg. Here. Clerk Barry is here. Mr. Supervisor, before we begin, um, I wonder if we could have a moment of silence for our dear friend, um, the late Jim Ellis, our former supervisor who passed away over the weekend. I know he's a dear friend of mine, and to, uh, I think everybody sitting at this board table, new and old, we've all known Jim and appreciated what he did and and David you and I and Hank have known him for a while Brad you and him and tight Bob I know you've been tight for all the years Kathy and Kathy and, and Cindy so if we could have a moment of silence in, in memory of Jim I think it'd be most appropriate thank you very much Thank you, sir. Approval of agenda, item four. Clerk Barry. Item four is the approval of the agenda with addendum if necessary. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Motion to approve by Clerk Barry, supported by Trustee Vosberg. Clerk Barry, would you call the roll? Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue? Aye. Treasurer Elliott? Aye. Supervisor Kirsten? Aye. Item five, we have two presentations tonight. Chief Randazzo, if you wouldn't mind taking over the podium, and we'll yield to you. Hit the red button, Jeff. There you go. Thanks. Is that working? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good evening, Supervisor and Trustees. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present the updated version of our best practices. Um, so I just want to take a quick moment to um, go over some updates that I think are important and are, you know, I spent about two years researching this. Um, it's something that most cities in our county are doing. And if, uh, for Macomb County, just to give you a little overview of it, um, Macomb County Animal Control services the entire county with the exception of four cities. Um, and that would be Warren, Sterling Heights, Mount Clemens, and East Point. Everything else is serviced by Macomb County Animal Control. So um, these are the topics that we updated. Um, obviously many of the cities um, you know, was just rolled out this year. Um, later part of the year, so a lot of cities and townships are adopting them as well. So I thank you for the opportunity to present them today to you. Um, to go over um, for the first slide, um, this is just kind of giving you a brief overview about impoundment. Um, what happens to an animal once it's impounded into Macomb County Animal Patrol? And it's obviously all governed by state law. And so for an animal that comes into Macomb County that has no way of tracking its owner. So if it's unlicensed, there's no microchip, um, it's held for four business days. If there is information that would lead us to an owner, so a license, a microchip, an ID, then we would hold that animal for seven business days. Livestock are different under Michigan state law, so that would be, you know, it goes for a longer time. But I'm just trying to give you a quick little overview and not take too much of your time. Um, we have to keep very detailed records of all the animals that come into Macomb County because under Michigan state law, they are actually considered property, someone's personal property. And so under Michigan state law, we actually have to make sure that we um, follow that animal through the whole entire process while they're in our care. And that includes um, their aftercare if they're adopted or what happens to them. Um, also for, for stray animals, they, by law, if they're in our service area, have to be either held at Macomb County Animal Control or by one of our partners so that individual that's losing their pet knows where to go look for it. 
So uh, I think it's important. One of the things that we did is obviously we service 13 law enforcement agencies. Um, so we came up with what we call the Good Samaritan form. So um, your police department, which has been great, um, has this form. So it kind of discussed where the animal would come from, where the Good Samaritan found that pet. And then it also on the bottom, if your police department returns it to the owner, there's a piece at the bottom that they would fill out. And then we would collect that information and turn it into our state report. Um, so I just kind of want to give you a quick overview of what happens when animals come into our care. Um, so going on with the actual updates, this is hobby breeders permit. So licensing hobby breeders is a really important step and most of all the updates are about being proactive. Having the tools in our toolbox, including your police department, for when we run into situations, we have something to write under. If anybody took the time to look under your current animal ordinance, it's very brief, it's very vague. I think there's maybe six little paragraphs in there. So obviously hobby breeders is not included in there, and so we wanted to make sure we updated it with hobby breeders. And these are just some of the situations that we have throughout the county in some of our neighboring communities. We have um, a person that was breeding Anatonian shepherds and unfortunately couldn't care for them. So Macomb County, when we stepped in, we took in 19 Anatonian shepherds that day. And that is a picture of animal control and they were in the back of a pickup truck. Um, then we also had um, a person that had over 400 parakeets. And so we're just trying to paint the story of why it's so important. For Michigan Department of Agriculture, they are only going to regulate breeders that have over 14 females that are actively breeding. So you can see where this big gap is at, that if you fall under, if you had 13 breeding females, there's no law in Chesterfield or ordinance that says you can't have them, other than your dog limit but they're gonna to try to obtain a breeding permit. One of the best things we could do is be proactive and have a permitting system. We're not necessarily banning everybody, what we wanna do is make sure that you have best practices in place, that your animals are being cared for. And an important piece of that is they need approval from the municipality, from the township to even have a breeding permit. So that's why I wanted to present some of this today because I wanted to kind of show you where there are some I don't want to say flaws, but there are some gaps in our ordinances that we have to address. And I've been doing this for 10 years, and what we would really love to see is a very uniformed ordinance throughout the entire county. It would only make sense that if you're in Chesterfield, the same rule would apply. We don't want to chase somebody into Armada and say, well, we don't care what you do in Armada, because at the same time, it still falls back onto the taxpayer, right? Because it's Macomb County Animal Control. So if we go on to the next one, we want to discuss potentially dangerous dogs. The reason why this ordinance is so proactive, and we adopted this back in um, Don Denault from uh, O'Reilly Rancilio and I um, made this up, is because it's about being proactive. Right now you just talk about vicious dogs. And, under, and technically you don't even have a definition for vicious dogs. It just talks about vicious dogs. If it was a rabid animal, a bit of person or another animal, but this part of the ordinance specifically talks about behavior and it talks about being proactive. So before the animal bites somebody, it maybe was their behavior. And then we have some guidelines in there for that pet parent. They need to take them to training, maybe sterilization. We want them microchipped. All those proactive things that makes a good canine citizen. And that to me is an important piece because Right now, you just have vicious dogs, and it's very vague. And this really puts in a piece about being proactive when we see the behavior, catching the behavior, and modifying it. So if we go on to the next one, the keeping of animals. This is already in there. So this is just kind of a recap that I was gonna point out to you guys about the keeping of animals, unattended animals, um, and I just wanted to put some stats in there for you. So like the stray animals, well, why is it important? Why do we care if an owner leaves their dog outside? Or, you know, well, here's why. If you look at stray calls, this is in our service area, the entire service area for the county, 
975 calls are generated for animals running at large. Well, we catch the animal, but we can't return the animal because nobody's home to retrieve the animal. There's no pet parent there. If we look at barking dogs, we have 263 complaints for barking dogs. We could either do a few things. Well, you might think, well, just remove the dog. Again, it goes back to personal property, right? Do we need a warrant to remove this dog? Or you might say, well, just give them a ticket. But the goal is to be proactive. We want to just keep ticketing people. We want compliance at the end of the day, right? But now we at least have an ordinance that we could really write under. It's being, it's, the whole goal today is about being proactive. Right now there's a house bill. It's a house bill number 4784. And it specifically talks about adequate care. What is outlines for adequate shelter? Right now we have a vague piece in your ordinance about what adequate shelter is. But we define it in our updates specifically. In your ordinance you could technically have a blue barrel which we would never want to see a blue barrel in Macomb County as long as I'm here, right? And that would be, you know, people are putting straws in there and they just have a dog live in this blue barrel because it shades them from the sun, it shades them from the, you know, technically the rays of the sun, which is what your ordinance talks about. Well, we could do better, and we have. So it's in the updated version of this, and it specifically talks about the shelter, and there's a house bill that's coming through about it and it specifically gets into weather conditions and inclement weather. Um, so I think, you know, in the next one, we kind of maybe dive a little bit more into it. I think your ordinance right now is a great start, but I definitely think that we could update it. Um, ours is obviously more in depth. And if we go to the next one, where we talk about keeping of the animals in severe weather conditions, this is a, you know, and I'm sorry about the graphic picture, but this is a frozen dog. This is what we're seeing out there. This just happened this um, winter in 2022, in the beginning of the year. And so the reason why this is important, because again, we want to be proactive. And all this is simply saying is that when we have a weather, you know, something, a weather warning that's issued by our national or local weather service, that we want to make sure that those animals have proper shelter, and we specifically talk about proper shelter. Or if you're leaving, we want them secured in your house or in a building. We do not want them outside tethered to the elements. And you might say, well, they, you know, they have a dog house. We know it's not adequate because this dog came out of a dog house. We talk about proper bedding. What is proper bedding? We don't want to throw a blanket inside of a dog house, and then that blanket gets wet, and that, now that material, that's cotton, is going to freeze. Right? We know because we're the experts. And this is about being proactive. So when we talk about investigating neglect, we did 374 calls just last year. And this is four neglect cases. And we investigated all of them. And that's a, that's a very cumbersome thing to do because every time you hear about a blizzard coming, we're gonna get you know 12 inches of snow, or it's gonna be 90 something degrees, people, as you know, love their pets, and they watch out for pets. And so that is 374 calls that we had to go on to make sure that we're doing those welfare checks. Right. So I just, you know, I, again, it's about being proactive. It's having those tools in the toolbox when we need them. And going on with keeping of animals, this was a law that um, I worked with um, at the uh, Association of Prosecutors. Um, this is a Pennsylvania law. It's a, you see a lot of this on the West Coast where it's a state law. And so, um, you know, we try to get the House bill. It's still being introduced. But in the meantime, we actually included it in our updated version of the best practices. And it's about leaving animals in hot cars, and it could be any, you know, animal in a hot car, and it kind of puts descriptions in there more in the regulation, but it talks about the animal being there under certain conditions that would endanger that health or the well-being of that animal. So I included some captions and some of the calls that we go on. So a dog in a car at LA Fitness on a 90 degree day. Then we had a dog panting uh, inside a silver Toyota forerunner, and that was going to be um, in Clinton Township. And I just kind of included one. But one that might hit a little more home for you is 
those of us that work at animal control, the police department probably get a tremendous amount of calls about a person that stands out in front on Hall Road, usually it's gonna be in Menards or another place, and they have their dog with them, and in all kinds of weather. And, write, and you currently don't have anything that we could write under. And this would definitely be an updated version that you could have a tool in your toolbox to render that situation. And then again, going on to keeping of animals, and this is the keeping of dangerous or exotic animals. So what we see a lot in Macomb County is we see a lot of people, unfortunately, wanting this desire to have exotics. And those servals, which are those cats kind of in the third picture there, that's actually a case in Royal Oak that you might have heard about that she had four, and they consistently were getting out all the time until they finally re removed them. This is a kangaroo we had. Um, there's a lemur, and then there is a spider monkey that we had that was part of a bite case that um, then went to the Detroit Zoo. Believe it or not, people are fascinated with exotic animals, and they can get them. And the hard part is, once they get them, then that would fall under animal control, right? Or your police department's gonna get a call about going out there. And so right now, we don't really have a great um, ordinance about really restricting them and actually banning them because we don't need people that are going to have exotic animals. Because unfortunately, there's really nowhere you could have an exotic animal and truly contain it. Because to me, it's more of a disaster to happen because what's the emergency plan? If those, when those four caracals got out, there's no emergency plan, and they were returned to those people on numerous occasions until they finally got out, and then an organization stepped in and took them all. But those cats are pretty big, and they could do damage, right? So the goal is, what's the, if we don't do something, then we at least at the bare minimum have an emergency plan. But the problem is you won't know. You might not know until someone decides to call, and then we, then we find out but we have no ordinance to write under, right? So it's just about, again, being proactive. This kind of leads us into our next one about wild animals. Unfortunately, there are pet stores in Michigan, one's located in Monroe, um, that sells non-native wildlife. Because in the state of Michigan, you cannot own native wildlife. You have to have a rehabilitator's license. However, that rehabilitator license is specifically for that, is for rehabilitating those animals. And if they're not rehabilitatable under the law, they need to be humanely euthanized, right? So we have a, some situations going on throughout the county where people go and obtain a wildlife permit, but unfortunately, they never seek the approval of their township or their municipality, and they need to. So what we're saying in here is that if someone is going to be a wildlife breeder, I'm sorry, wildlife rehabilitator, then they have to seek approval from the township. And you have to approve it, and so do we at Macomb County, because we want to know what the plan is, what vet they're working for. And just because they attain a state permit does not, that, does not allow them to have them here in Chesterfield or anywhere in Macomb County, as long as that municipality does not allow it. So the, what we did put in the updated regulations is they have to be accredited from the American uh, Aquarium and Zoological Societies because they set the standard of how you would care for a wild animal. Obviously, the, you know, the trade zoo is accredited, right? So they set the barriers, how far it has to be around from people, what kind of fencing you have to have. I think we all, maybe during COVID, all seen Tiger King, right? So we can guarantee that he was not accredited. <laughs> But so we don't want a situation happen where, unfortunately, this is a, a Arctic fox that we had. Um, then we had, you know, someone with, uh, that was keeping raccoons as, you know, other wildlife. And unfortunately, most of the time, it is in a point where they're not properly caring for that animal. All right? So they have to, we have to find sanctuaries for them to go, or they have to be humanely euthanized because they're not able to be returned back out into the wild. So I just want to, you know, I think, again, that's about having those, having an ordinance that addresses all that. So the keeping of animals, we talk about community cats. And this would, you know, for anybody who's familiar with trap, neuter, and return, right? Right now, there's nothing regulating them. 
but it's been going on since I was a chief in 2013. And currently we have done over 700 cats in Macomb County and cost us over $44,000. Um, most of it's paid for by a grant. Um, so our goal is we want something in an ordinance that specifically states about the proper community cat program. We don't, people are doing it. We know that they're out there doing it, right? So I think the goal is doing it properly, outlining it in an ordinance. You know, who's the caretaker? You know, we don't want people ground feeding them. We want feeding stations. They're going to do it, believe me. I, every Wednesday, we're doing 15 surgeries for TNR cats. And like I said, we're paying for it, um, mostly through grants, but it's about $58 a cat. And so, which I don't mind, but the difference is we at least want to address it in an ordinance about specifically doing it in a proper manner. We don't want people out there um, improperly doing it and it's creating a lot of neighbor disputes where a lot of it could just you know, be handled through an updated ordinance. Then we're gonna talk about animals on display, which I think um, has happened here in your library a few times. Um, but we're, we do not want animals performing or circuses shall be permitted in which animals are induced or encouraged to perform through the use of chemical, mechanical, electrical, or any device that would physically injure those animals. Right, so um, what we're asking is that they're licensed with the United States Department of Ag. If you're an exhibitor, you need to be licensed, right? So we wanna know what their emergency plan is. I included the emergency plan for a circus that was in Fraser, and I unfortunately can't really read it that well, but in their emergency plan was that if the elephants escaped the circus, which was at their ice arena, then the police officers were to shoot them. The only problem was when I went to the police department, none of the police officers agreed to be shooting elephants that day. And the gentleman we're at the top talks about, you know, trying to tranquilize them. Well, the unfortunate part was when we did the inspection, which I have the responsibility of inspecting them, nobody's there. It's just the animal handlers, right? So now we have camels, we have um, elephants, and we had other large carnivores inside an ice arena in Fraser, but none of the staff that was responsible for their care or could stop them in an emergency plan, and this is the emergency plan, and the police weren't even there. So it kind of goes on to, I know that there used to be some um, exhibitor that would come to the library and have all his exotics and stuff, and unfortunately, um, he did get in trouble as well. But I think what's important is that if we're having that, you need to be licensed, we need to have an emergency plan, and we need to really think about the public health concern that's there, right? And what precautions are we taking as a township if we're going to allow this? But at least you would have something, right? So USDA requires, or Michigan Department of Ag requires that for livestock, if you go to Blake Cider Mill right now, they have to have hand washing stations. It's all regulated, right? But there's nothing regulating other animals on display. Right? When I first started, we had Gibraltar Trade Center. You know, there's a lot of animals that were on display. So um, that's one of them. And then going on with animals on display, we have uh, farm animals and, you know, petting farms. So we have, see this a lot right now, especially at the cider mills. And most of them um, run a really good show. You know, Blake does a great job at that. Um, but there's a lot of places, unfortunately, that do not. So this is one of the situations where we want this updated in here and what we have is the generally accepted agricultural management practice and that is a state standard that um, Michigan State University, Michigan Department of Agriculture, that they, the Right to Farm Act, they all came up with what we call the GAMPs and again that's your generally accepted agricultural management practices and they set the standard, the guideline of how people should be caring for their livestock, right? So we're not implementing something new, we're just passing it down to the township and saying, okay, here's what the state says, this is how what we should, if we're having petting farms, 
that are going to be at the public, then this is what we should be doing. We should be following their guidelines and making sure that the animals are being properly cared for and that we're protecting the public, that, we are, that we're licensed with the United States Department of Agriculture if we're going to have specific animals that are regulated for their movement throughout Michigan. The other one that we're going to talk about briefly that some of you might already know about is a humane pet acquisition. Um, this has to deal specifically um, with puppy mills and catteries and where people are obtaining animals. So um, we do have some situations that are going on here in Chesterfield. I know that some of people might already be aware of it. But it has to do with people bringing animals into Chesterfield, selling them, but yet they're not licensed. They're op technically operating a pet shop. They have no paperwork. We went to all three homes. Not one person has a paperwork on any of these puppies that we're inspecting. Some of the puppies were sick, and unfortunately, people had purchased them. So, and they were left with these vet bills. So when we went to all three of these homes, um, there was no, nobody could provide paperwork other than they were brought in from Indiana. Some were brought in from Coldwater, Michigan. Um, you know, some were brought in from Ohio. So that's just Chesterfield, right? And that's just of what we know. And the reason why the Humane Pet Acquisition is an important step in the right direction is because we're not banning animals from being in pet stores. We're saying team up. Like right now, Macomb County Animal Control, we're in Pet Supply Pluses. They have our cats and they have our, our dogs and um, people can do you know, weekend adoptions there. A lot of places you know of in Chesterfield, um, Pet Smarts, they have a lot of rescues in their um, facilities and they do a lot of their adoptions, which are rescued animals. And that's a really important step in the right direction. So when we talk about animal rescue reg registration, not, what we're saying is, if you're running a rescue, and it's a true rescue, it's got a you know, nonprofit organization or status, what we're saying is we want you to register. We want to know where they're at. We want them on the radar to make sure that they as well have best practices. I'm held to a high standard as a chief for Macomb County Animal Control. The state inspects my building. They, obviously, I showed you earlier how they um, track all the animals that are in our care, that we're providing adequate care. And so all we're asking is that they're held to the same standard and that they're regulated. And if you think of it like this, so during Hurricane Ian, a lot of rescues went down to Florida and they bring those animals back into the state of Michigan. Well, you'll never know. By law, they're supposed to be followed by a certificate of veterinary inspection. There's a law that says they have to be vaccinated at a certain age, they have to be treated for internal, external parasites. Um, but who's really regulating that? The state's not sending somebody down to regulate that here in Chesterfield. So we need to, right? So we're, what we're saying is if you're running a rescue, we're not banning you. We're making sure you have best practices in place and that if you are bringing animals from wherever and there's movement of animals within the state of Michigan and Chesterfield Township, we need to know about it. Ukraine, when everything going on in Ukraine, a lot of rescues went over to Ukraine, start bringing the animals back, and unfortunately, because Ukraine is a high rabies alert country, the CDC and the Humane Society of the United States stopped animals coming in from Ukraine. Well, the damage was already done because animals were already in the state of Michigan. And then there was the rabies scare where a few of the animals did have rabies, and then we had to hurry up and try to track those animals which is extremely cumbersome when the plane landed in Pennsylvania, but the animals were driven into the state of Michigan. So that's why this is proactive. This is about having those tools in the toolbox for your police department and Macomb County Animal Control that services, you know, majority of all your animal complaints. Um, and then I kept it very short, so that was the end of that. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Board and I'm here if you have any questions as yeah. well. Board members have any questions? Thank you, Chief. Very thorough, um, detailed presentation. Thank and again, you. just the impetus of this, the Chief reached out to us some time ago, uh, voiced some concerns about our current ordinance. We did send this on to uh, Township Attorney. Chris Anderson's been reviewing it. Public Safety's been looking at it. And our hope is to bring it back in some manner in the future to modify and update our ordinance. As he said, we've got voids and vacancies. So, Chief, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs>
second presentation tonight. Uh, I excuse Josh and Mitch from tonight's meeting, and this is really just an informative side. Back in May, the DPW took delivery of their uh, new um, rubber tire loader. Um, this is just a notification. If you look in your package, it, uh, it's just a notification that the old uh, rubber tire loader is going up for auction. There's an evaluation sheet in. This is similar and comparable to what they have done in the past through a, a, a public auction bid site. There are photographs attached. There's an assessment of, of uh, the piece of equipment. And then they will work with, the, uh, with a uh, uh, public auction site to where the, uh, the piece of equipment is auctioned off at the uh, uh, most practical cost for the township. So uh, Josh and Mitch couldn't make it here tonight. I, I guess I can enter entertain any questions that may arise from it. It's really just an informative piece when the original replacement came in, the initial, uh, 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 the knowledge that this, this uh, piece of equipment was going to be sold eventually. Any comments or anything, concerns? Mr. Supervisor, just a couple quick ones. Um, could we get a breakdown? Uh, I guess it's, it's already kind of a done deal in terms of you know, putting it out to sale. Um, but with the use of BSNA, we're able to track you know, what piece of equipment is used for what job, whether it's a general fund job or a enterprise fund job. And so do we have any information on this particular uh, piece of equipment that's leaving? And um, are we keeping track now of the new equipment? Um, and then is the, uh, one of the things that came out of the packet was the, um, the breakdown, the hydraulics. There's tremendous amount of problems with um, the hydraulics and the leaking. Is that part of a general maintenance program? And do we have anybody, I know with our uh, sort of enterprise, we have that done with normal fleet vehicles, but like in terms of our equipment, does our mechanic or do we have somebody looking at the, um, uh, you know, general maintenance uh, specifically on this piece of equipment? What I would I would wonder about the leaks, and you know, was it neglect or you know? And do we feel that it's it's exhausted its useful life? Um, for my conversations with them, this is a exhausted its useful life for the community. Um, the cost to repairs, obviously, on any piece of equipment, sometimes they just outpace the the value of the machine, I think sure. that's where they're at. And I think when they originally re uh, requested a replacement for this through the bid site, um, they knew that there were repairs and, and uh, that's what the assessment did in the package, kind of sent them a uh, tone of what those costs were. As far as the internal maintenance of this, it's uh, we do have an internal fleet manager that this falls under his scope, but we do not, as I understand, we use a third-party vendor to come in and make all the serious repairs on this uh, heavy diesel mechanic. So it would be, uh, uh, it'd be a third-party vendor that, that did all the major overhauls and repairs on all of our heavy equipment. And that, honestly, that's about the, dang, that's the extent of my, uh, my knowledge of uh, the heavy equipment operation. Okay, I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk with you. I mean, it's uh, just some ideas, uh, suggestions for the new equipment, how we're you know, monitoring that would be something so, I'd like to talk to you about. And your other question, the goal is, yes, in BSNA, we will track hours, job, uh, uh, job sites, locations, time, not only just with equipment, but with staffing and material. We're not there yet. We're work, we continue to work towards it. But, yes, that is the ultimate goal. You pull up a, work, a worksheet or a job, uh, we have a complete list of equipment used, staff used, hours. We're building that as we go forward. Item six, department reports. Are there any department reports? See none? I have one. No. Trustee Joseph, please. Um, just as the uh, update from uh, Ms. Madsen at the library, um, th nothing um, really more consequential for them than the upcoming millage. Ms. Uh, Madsen sent me an email uh, asking me to remind uh, residents that, uh, and I'll just read her paragraph. She says that uh, for the past 28 years, Chesterfield's public library has leased temporary storefronts and uh, in an industrial warehouse facility uh, as the population increased to more than 45,000 residents. In 2018, the library purchased six acres of vacant land for the purpose of building a new public library. In 2021, the library received a remarkable donation to secure the future of public library services in our community. 
On Tuesday, November 8, voters will be asked to consider a new additional millage at a rate of one mill for 15 years for the construction and operation of a new public library. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth Matson. So uh, again, just reiterating, uh, I think it's, uh, people are relatively aware of this uh, ballot initiative, uh, which will be uh, part of your ballot on November 8th. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Domingue. From the Leisure Services Division, the Chesterfield Leisure Services Department is looking to hire several positions in the next few months. Leisure Service Site Manager, ages 18 and up. Leisure Services Assistant, 16 and up. Positions will be largely at the Chesterfield Community Center, working part-time year-round up to 30 hours per week. Day, evening, and weekend shifts are available for flexible spending. The Parks and Rec Commission, there are currently two seats open on the Parks and Rec Commission. If you're interested in serving on the 22 to 2023 committee, fill out the application on the Township website and submit your letter of interest to Supervisor Kirsten through the mail at bkirsten at chesterfieldtownship.org. Service includes a stipend for one monthly committee meeting that meets the last Wednesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Each position available is a two-year term. Save the following dates. December 1st is the Chesterfield Tree Lighting, and January 7th is the Chesterfield Community Center Open House. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you. Clerk Berry. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I have reports from both the Elections Department as well as the Clerk's Department. The Clerk's Department will be suspending passport uh, application processing uh, beginning this Monday, October the 31st, and will reopen November the 14th for passport processing. We are shutting down for two weeks because of the election for preparations that need to take place, as well as conducting the election itself. So um, passports will be unavailable after this Friday. That is the last opportunity for two weeks uh, to process, uh, have process, uh, passports processed, excuse me. Uh, from the Elections Department, as many of you know, the November 8th gubernatorial general election uh, is two weeks from today. Polls will open at township polling locations at 7 a.m. and they will remain open until 8 p.m. Absentee ballots are available and can be requested uh, up till the Saturday before election day to be mailed to you. Uh, emergency absentee ballots may be uh, obtained up until the Monday at 4 p.m. prior to election day. So that is the day before the election day. If you would like an absentee ballot, you must complete an absentee ballot application or request in writing uh, to the clerk's office before we can issue you a ballot. Please contact the clerk's office and anyone on our staff can assist you with obtaining an absentee ballot. If you were expecting an absentee ballot and did not receive it, please contact our office and we can also track that for you. You may also access a tracking on our website as well by going to the elections page and the track my ballot ballot on the Michigan votes, um, Michigan voter assistance uh, uh, program that the Secretary of State offers. It's actually called the Michigan Voter Assistance Center or Information Center, MVIC, and they can also track, uh, you can also track your ballot online there as well. In addition to that, uh, election day will be Tuesday, November the 8th, and that is a day that the township offices here uh, will have two polling locations located here. So for those who vote here at the township offices, parking sometimes is a challenge, um, but uh, we are doing the best that we can. We encourage you to vote early uh, in the day that tends to be a little less congested, although we know most people are voting by absentee ballot. If you have voted an absentee ballot and you would like to change your vote, you can do that. Um, you may spoil your ballot here at the clerk's office. You must do that in writing and request to spoil your ballot. Uh, we can then provide you with, an, with a new ballot and pull the ballot that you had previously submitted to us. Many people think because they've submitted an absentee ballot that uh, they cannot change their vote in the event that uh, they'd like to change their mind or there is a candidate that's dropped out or some other change they'd like to make to their ballot. You can change a ballot that you have already submitted, but you must make that request prior to 4 p.m. the day before the election, and you must do that in writing. If there's any other questions that we can answer for you regarding the upcoming election, please do not hesitate to contact the clerk's office. We are available Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. You can contact us by phone. You can email us as well, or come in here to the office, and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Clerk Bear. Item 7. Consent agenda. 
All items under the consent agenda are considered routine by the board and will be enacted in one motion. There is no separate discussion of these items. If discussion of any item is required by a board member, it will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Public comments on the consent agenda items are permitted. 7A, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting of October 11th, 2022. Item B, approval of the payment of bills as submitted by the finance department. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? Motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. Support. Motion by Clerk Barry, supported by Trustee Loster. Charger Elliott. Comments from the public? Uh, Mr. Supervisor? Trustee I would, Joseph. I would ask that uh, agenda item B, uh, approval of payment of bills, be considered separately, please. I have a motion by Trustee Joseph to consider the payment of bills separately. Is there support? Support. I, I don't know that this a voting issue. I think consent agenda is simply anything that requires further discussion is just pulled. So I don't know that we need to vote on that, Mr. Supervisor, but whatever you like. So you, we will move payment of bills to item... 8A. If you like, uh, whatever procedure you want to do is fine with me. So I have a motion to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item payment, item B, payment of bills. Any further comments? Motion by Trustee Joseph, supported by S Trustee Anderson to, uh, I, I apologize. I have a motion by Clerk Barry, supported by Treasurer Elliott, to approve the consent agenda with the removal of item 7B to the regular agenda. Clerk Barry. Clerk Barry, aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Item 8A, regular agenda. Approval. Go ahead, Clerk Barry, I'm sorry. Item 7B, that was removed and considered separately, will now be considered. The um, approval of the payment of bills is submitted by the Finance Department. Do a motion to approve item 8A. Motion to approve. Treasurer Elliott. Second. Supported by Clerk Barry. Comments from the board. Mr. Supervisor, Mr. Supervisor uh, my, my question, it is um, actually on um, page 32 of 65 of the bill run. It is a, a general fund expenditure and it is um, uh, fund number 101446 nine two eight um, it has to do with department 446 which is highways streets and bridges um, at our last board meeting we had uh, some discussion about the uh, zone two and the um, the special assessment district that was created uh, with the zone two repair uh, we had some debate about how much money and that was not uh, as I understood it from the treasurer that was uh, not a uh, I don't want to say accurate, but it wasn't a final number, that the numbers would continue to change as individuals paid. Uh, but I do think it's significant that we are um, writing a check, at least a check on the bill run for nearly $4 million uh, out of the general fund. And there is no, um, or maybe somebody can tell me, how much of that has already been reimbursed? So when somebody pays for the sidewalk in zone two, I'm assuming they would write a check to the township, it would go into the general fund, it would be sort of amassed, and then when the project was done, um, the check to the, um, the sidewalk, uh, the, I'm assuming this is Delta Concrete, um, is written. So uh, that, one, how much of the th almost $4 million has already been paid by the residents? How much is uncollected? And then two, um, do we... 
Yeah. I'm looking at page 32 of 96. Is that where you're on? I'm on. Uh, I'm on page 32 of 65. Is what what I have, but I can slide it down to you. I don't know if we have different. Uh, do you have it, Trustee Anderson? Yeah. It is a general fund, uh, 101 general fund expenditure. Um, again, fund fund balance number is uh, 101-446-928. What's that? Treasury LA. Yeah. This is 32 of 65. Right here. You can take this, I'll share Hanks, because he has the same agenda. All right. Do we all have the same agenda packet? Or is there like a difference? The thirty nine hundred dollars? Mm -hmm. Thirty nine hundred and then thirteen thousand for uh, Delta Concrete, thirteen four ninety nine. I'm sorry, thirty yeah, thirty nine the thirty nine sixty five. I said million. I'm sorry. Yeah. Apologize. It's thirty-nine hundred dollars. And yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. With, I, uh, yeah. I apologize. I can see why people were wondering where seventeen million came from. No. I. I'm sorry. Thousand. Sorry. Apologize. Okay. The, so. so what, that, what does that represent? Is the is no, the question? Yeah. Okay. So that one here is, so the vendor is Chesterfield Township. So that's Chesterfield Township is writing a check to Chesterfield Township for our, for the township's portion of um, sidewalk maintenance that was done. That was $3,965. Okay. So that's, that's out of, you have to do that in order to for the general ledger does that make sense so that you have to do a journal entry that way what, so, what are we doing on uh, what are we doing as it relates to uh, so we've got sidewalks that need to be repaired and we are paying for those sidewalks i see okay so and we've and we've done that we'll do that when we have to pay for it um one fund will pay it into the other so this is really just an accounting process to move the money into their proper gl number if that makes sense it does and okay. then the delta concrete uh, check uh, underneath is the uh, actual uh, repairs that we paid to the vendor so yeah that vendor is delta concrete so that that check was made that's for sidewalk maintenance to delta concrete in that in that amount okay thank you i have nothing further you're welcome thank you Any further discussion on the approval of payments of bills as submitted by the finance department? Item 8A under the regular agenda note. Do I have a motion to approve item 8? I'm sorry, comments from the public. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, I have a motion by Treasurer Elliott, supported by Clerk Berry, to approve item 8A as presented. Clerk Berry. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Item 8B. Approve a recommendation by Public Services to authorize Supervisor Kirsten to execute the agreement for replacement and relocation of water main with DTE located at 21 Mile Road in Gratiot. Do you have a motion to approve? So moved. Trustee Vosberg, I will support that. And I will, again, uh, Mitch was excused from tonight's uh, meeting. Um, I'll let uh, the attorney describe this and what it is in detail um, as the agreement since he drafted it. Uh, last Tuesday, I was contacted by Mitch O'Connor who indicated that DTE currently has a project uh, underway at 21 Mile Road in Gratiot and it involves the bore of a 36-inch steel casing uh, 
as of course, as luck would have it, the township has an eight-inch water main between point A and point B that will, it, will, it will intersect. And DTE had come to Mitch and asked whether or not uh, the township would agree at DTE's cost to, to cap the existing water line. It's going to be partially removed and relocated so DTE can continue with the 36-inch bore. When the 36-inch bore is done, the, uh, the line will be relocated. It, doesn't, it does not in any way affect the township's uh, 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 main as far as providing service to any resident or business. Uh, so Mitch and DTE have agreed to this. I was directed to prepare an agreement. Uh, I did so. I submitted it to Mitch, who submitted it to DTE. Mitch was satisfied with it, as is DTE. 100 percent of the cost will be borne by DTE in an amount not to exceed $51,000 and some change. Um, and that's it. It's simply an accommodation to help DTE complete their project by simply lifting up our line, letting them go through, and then we'll relocate our main. And this agreement uh, memorializes that understanding. There's not one ounce of t township money that uh, goes into this, and uh, DTE will provide any traffic control and any restoration as well. Thank you, sir. Any comments from the board? Any further? Comments from the public? I have a motion by Trustee Vosberg, supported by Supervisor Kirsten, to approve item, and I'm going to revert back to 8A as presented. Clerk Barry, would you call the roll? Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Treasurer Elliott? Aye. Clerk Barry, aye. Item 8B. Item 8B is to consider a request by the landowner to amend the consent judgment Macomb Baptist Church, successor in interest to Salt River Christian Church and Schwartz Bradley LLC. So moved. Motion by Trustee DeBain. Support. Supported by Treasurer Elliott. Jonathan, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, yes, this amendment in front of you uh, was originally from 2004. Um, it is being requested by Macomb Baptist Church. They are present tonight. Um, the request, the original consent judgment was for a multifamily senior living facility. Uh, their current request is to do a church. Uh, what this amendment does is essentially brings the property back to its underlying zoning, which is R1B. Um, they would still be subject to planning commission approvals and um, following the, the development procedures of the zoning ordinance. So this is pretty standard. Uh, the only extra thing in here is in the original consent. There was a easement for a 60 foot um, vehicular access to the township's lagoon properties. Uh, since that's no longer needed, the request was changed to a easement for a pathway, which they have agreed to. So with that, I can answer any questions. Any comments from the board? Trust you, Vosper. I did have one question when I was reading through this. It had to do with access to the property. Um, is this the piece where there was going to be a roadway and now it's going to be a pathway? Yeah, you can see it up on the screen up there, um, kind of where it's bubbled at. Um, that was uh, originally. The easement was never described or recorded in the original consent judgment. Um, it was discussed, um, but that was ne it was never done. Um, and I, I believe the township has historically accessed the property from Hennings. Um, but yeah, since that's no longer needed, um, we were looking for pedestrian access. So that access then will become part of the, the, the whatever it is, that however, whatever that's called or however they convey that to us, that Cor will be conveyed? Correct. It, it is in the language of the consent judgment and the way that that would be handled would be at the time of site plan approval. All right. Thank you. Any further comments from the board? Comments from the public? Seeing no comments from the public, I'll bring it back up to the board. I have a motion by Trustee Demink, supported by Treasurer Elliott, to approve item 8B as stated. Clerk Barry? Trustee Demink. Aye. Trustee uh, Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Clerk Barry. Aye. Item 8C. 
Item 8C is to consider a request by the landowner to amend the consent judgment Macomb Land Management, LLC, successor in interest to Patrick Felter v. v. Chesterfield Township. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Uh, Trustee Vosberg. Second by Clerk Berry. Jonathan, if you would. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, again, very similar here. Um, pretty simple one. Back in 2001, there was a consent judgment entered by the township that restricted this piece of property to a um, auto body and collision shop uh, that was never built. Uh, currently, there is interest in doing a um, self-storage facility. Um, again, this would basically make this property consistent with the surrounding zonings, which is M1 light industrial, and they would still be subject to the zoning ordinance and normal development procedures. So at this point, we are recommending approval. Thank you. Any comments from the board? No comments from the board. Trustee Vosberg. So, uh, again, just a clarification by this action, we'll then put it back the way it was before. So even if they don't, even if this current desire of the owner to do this if somebody else purchased it they could do whatever is in that zoning essentially yes back when, at the time of the original consent judgment it was um, residential property um, since then that area has gone industrial so now it's the only piece that has underlying zoning of residential but now the residential doesn't fit um, with the auto body being an industrial use in nature it's essentially industrial so yes to answer your question anything in the industrial district would be allowed on this property so it would be consistent and if this owner sold it does that have to it would not have to come back to us no it, as long as the next use was in compliance correct. with that thank you further comments from the board comments from the public seeing no comments from the public i have a motion by trustee vosberg supported by clerk barry to approve item eight C. Clerk Berry. Trustee Vosper. Aye. Clerk Berry, aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Demink. Aye. Super uh, Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Thank you, Jonathan. Item nine, there are no public hearings. There is an addendum. Item 10, 10A. Item 10A is approval for an emergency purchase of a 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe police package four-wheel drive vehicle to replace the canine vehicle that was significantly damaged in a crash on October 19, 2022 at a total cost of $70,327.45. Do I have a motion to approve? Trustee Joseph? Support. Supported, supported by Trustee Anderson. Captain McNair, if you want to address this. Yeah, so uh, first I want to apologize for the Board of Trustees versus Board of Directors. That was a little bit of oversight on my part. I apologize for that. Yes, we had our canine vehicles involved in an accident last Wednesday. Um, as you can see by the write-up, uh, we're at 90% of the value of the vehicle. That's before we even open it up. Uh, they definitely said there's some suspension issues and some uh, equipment issues in it. Uh, so I'm looking to uh, send that vehicle to auction and uh, outfit one of the current vehicles that we have. This vehicle will be to backfill uh, the two vehicles that we have in the garage waiting to be built. Um, it's just been one of those years where the supply chain has caught up to us and it, it actually helped us. Uh, right now, the, our builder, our fleet builder, will not build them unless we have all the uh, parts and equipment for the vehicle. We have two of them sitting there, so we're going to convert one over to a uh, canine vehicle. This vehicle will then replace uh, the second vehicle that was going to be built, and it'll give us uh, hopefully a few months to uh, get the proper equipment. Everybody's a uh, 90 to 120 day equipment right now. So, any, any comments from the board? No comments from the board? <coughs> comments from the public? What's that? An auto accident. Sir, if you want to go to the podium. Okay. I have a motion by Trustee Joseph, supported by Trustee Anderson, to approve item 10A as presented. Clerk Berry? Trustee Joseph? Aye. Trustee Anderson? Aye. Trustee Demink? Aye. Trustee Vosberg? Aye. Treasurer Elliott? Aye. Supervisor Kirsten? Aye. Clerk Berry? Aye. Item 11, public comments. Thank you. We'll, thank you, sir. 
Comments from the public? Uh, you have a five minute time limit. The, limit w the clock will start when you begin to speak. And we ask if you uh, would state your name um, for the record. Hit the microphone button, sir. Thank you. Pastor Dr. Ron Wagner, I'm the pastor of Macomb Baptist Church. And on behalf of our church, I want to thank people who've been involved in this uh, amended consent judgment that has now been approved, but uh, Jonathan Palin and uh, his assistant, Sarah Zelensky, uh, they've been very helpful over the past year, providing information, explaining the procedures, and giving suggestions on how to proceed. We also appreciate Joel Nichols, assessing department who has been helpful with boundary lines and tax and we thank Supervisor Kirsten for his careful direction, supervision for this project. We also acknowledge and appreciate all of you, the Chesterfield Township board members, who in addition to your daily uh, responsibilities have spent hours studying the documentation presented to you regarding of this amended consent judgment. We are very thankful and excited about the positive vote. Uh, Macomb Baptist Church desires to build a church on our Cotton Road property. We'll honor God will be a source of spiritual growth for our church family and will be a spiritual lighthouse for the residents and an asset to, to uh, Chesterfield Township. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your kind words. Any further comments from the public? Mike Horton, 50393 Bauer. Uh, just wanted to say I do appreciate seeing everybody come out on Friday for the uh, opening, or sorry, the ribbon cutting of the uh, community center at Sugarbush. It was a good event. Um, I think it's a good use for the former school. As someone who had attended there for elementary school, I'm you know, very familiar with uh, the building setup and I think it will do good use for the community, especially as time goes on and hopefully getting a satellite uh, portion of the library there. It'll be a good centralized location for the community to participate in many events and um, activities and build that sense of community for further um, for the future, uh, especially regarding kids and other formats. Um, I know uh, one particular guest stole the show, so I'm happy that everybody got a chance to see my dog there <laughs> and uh i know she'll she would t take all of the thunder away in the township <laughs> but um i guarantee you she she was a good dog the whole time aside from that um I recently i'd started a new job and i wish to uh, say that after only two days on it i really would like to stress the importance of people working behind the scenes in government because dealing with a lot of paperwork, a lot of uh, recordings, a lot of uh, documentation, even though in my position it's magnitudes more than anything in this township, it is still a, a very difficult position to be in and I think there are a lot of good workers in this township that um, that maintain a lot of the ongoings of the necessities of bureaucracy, how much we dislike it. And um, I think that's ultimately what government is. And it's, it's a necessary evil, but it, it is what is partially in, um, necessary in, uh, for the functions of society as a whole. And so as we come on to the election, I would like everyone to remember what I've said here before that um, government is more than uh, what happens in DC, that elections are more than who the president is, and that politics is more than what the parties are. So please be civil and please uh, um, be informed and when you are willing to uh, go in and cast your ballot, whether it be absentee or whether it be uh, in person, Take note of the resources at your disposal, whether it be from local papers or the candidates forum that was done here a few weeks ago in this building. Um, 
done by the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce. There is information out there and there is a multitude of different races going on, not just at the state level, but in the local um, situations, especially that for like things like school board and for the township or state rep, um, state senator, county commissioner, all that. Uh, with that being said, uh, if, you're all, if you do uh, wanna do something special for me, you can always write in my dog too, because who wouldn't want her as a politician? <laughs> Uh, take care, and you guys have a uh, have a safe election. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any further comments from the public? And a safe Halloween. Thank you, sir. Any further comments from the public? We'll bring it back up to the board, Trustee Dubink. Real quick, uh, next week Monday is Halloween. Trick or treat hours are from six to eight in the township. Um, also, I'd like to extend my condolences to the family of Jim Ellis. Jim broke me in in politics when I got on this board in 2004. Did not hardly know that much about politics, uh, but my first four years sitting up here, Jim taught me a lot, and uh, I still talk to him all through the years on different things. He's a great guy, but uh, he's the one that broke me in and mentored me. I know he mentored a lot, few other people sitting up on this board, but a great guy, so my condolences to his family. And uh, also the last meeting uh, two weeks ago, I had to leave due to a family emergency. Everybody saw me. I, I had to take a phone call, and then I had to leave. So please excuse it, but it was a family emergency. Thank you. Trustee Mouser. Thank you. I don't have any further comments tonight. Trustee Anderson. Thank you. Two weeks from tonight, Election Day. Um, vote. You will have some input. Don't vote. You have no choice. Don't bother registering. It doesn't matter. Very important uh, from federal, state, county and township uh, the future of all these especially close to you your township a lot of a lot of what happens in the next couple of years will depend on that vote also uh, as um, trustee Domingue said uh, we got Halloween coming up here have a good time be careful and um, have a good night trustee Joseph thank you mr. supervisor um, one I just wanted to thank uh, dr. Wagner uh, for coming to the board meeting tonight and bringing part of your congregation and um, your members and then sticking through the meeting to acknowledge some of our staff. That, that was just very kind. You know, um, your, your transaction was done and a lot of people just leave after that. And to stick around and say thanks to uh, Mr. Palin, Mr. Nichols, um, we, we're glad that you're here. And uh, I hope that your um, construction and all of the things that uh, you know have the same kind of success you're a great partner to the township and um, I appreciate you uh, sticking around to acknowledge those who you know deserve it so thank you uh, and thank you to the members uh, that came with Dr. Wagner tonight uh, Mr. Wharton it must have been like uh, old home week uh, uh, Commissioner Kraft I understand was a classmate maybe I don't know what year but he, uh, he graduated uh, from Sugarbush and he was over there for the uh, dedication and uh, it was nice to see uh, such a great community, um, you know, kind of coming together. There were a lot of people there um, and it looked like a great event. Uh, as Trustee Anderson mentioned, we have a number of things on the ballot um, November 8th. Uh, a lot of proposals, a lot of statewide proposals, obviously governor's races and uh, very important things. There's a lot of talk about um, election integrity and making sure that one, your vote counts. And I know um, the clerk's department is working very hard to make sure that we count every uh, registered vote, but also in terms of how uh, candidates uh, conduct themselves. And I think um, independent of who you vote for, Republican, Democrat, uh, it's a difficult thing to run for office especially on the uh, board level. Uh, you take a, lot of, uh, take a lot of hits, and sometimes they come in the form of mailers. I know um, recently at the uh, library board meeting, I think there was some real disappointment in some of the uh, mailers that have gone out attacking uh, the library. And, uh, you know, again, I understand people's um, concerns about higher taxes, and uh, again, I share some of the some of the concerns that I that I see in some of these mailers, but um, it's really disingenuous to send a mailer out with a committee that doesn't exist. Uh, I think even our board members um, who got involved in sending out mailers uh, talking about their position on certain things 
um, you know, for a campaign to have $60 in their account and then spend $1,300 on a ballot initiative that looks a lot like the other mailers that go out, it, it, it kind of casts a, a shadow over fake uh, political action committees. We're, we're all obligated to um, register with the county and give uh, details on who contributes to our campaigns, where we spend the money, how we spend the money, and who supports us. Those are all required. Um, and so if you're going to start a political action committee because you feel strongly about something, I encourage people to do that. But um, when groups get together and uh, there's, there's funding that comes from different places attacking different either candidates or ballot proposals, you know, I think that falls into election integrity as well. And um, I would hope that anybody who, um, you know, gets involved in, in, in a political action committee does it fairly. Um, Supervisor Kirsten, not to single you out, but uh, this was a tough thing for you to take on the politics and all of the campaign requirements and all of the filing requirements. And um, I was just really uh, impressed by the way that you handled that. You had uh, great people around you. Uh, you hired accountants and you spent a lot of time and money making sure that you documented sp specifically where your money came from and um, you know filed that appropriately and that that I think is is election integrity. I think that is what we should be doing and uh, when we venture out and get involved in ballot proposals and we work with groups that aren't registered and it, it really casts a dark shadow and I and I don't like that but uh, I, I would encourage all those who ran to continue to stay involved in uh, township politics on a state level local level whatever it is that you're uh, interested in because uh, it is that collective investment in our community that makes it a great place and uh, lastly I'd just like to echo the sentiments of uh, trustee uh, Domingue who talked about Mr. Ellis um, he was he was the supervisor when you first got on the board, and um, I, I was uh, very active. I would come to the podium. Yeah, yeah, I was out there, and uh, I would come to the podium, and I always appreciated Mr. Ellis, even when I had something that maybe he didn't agree with. Um, I'd get a phone call, and he would invite me to the township, and, um, you know, he, he was uh, a very special guy that you don't see uh, come along very often. He... Uh, was willing to meet with everybody and anybody and um, was, a, was a good friend after the, um, uh, he left politics. And I would often get calls from him as uh, trustee, uh, I'm sorry, Supervisor Kirsten and I were talking about today. I think he kept in contact with township employees in a way that was just, you know, uh, very loved, uh, very, very loved and appreciated by uh, everybody in the township. And uh, I'm, I'm sad that he's gone. Uh, but he was a great friend to us all, and um, I'm, I'm uh, really going to miss him. So thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Treasurer Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, just wanted to uh, thank Mike Wharton for coming out to um, introduce us to your dog uh, the other day at the ribbon cutting, and um, that was it was great, and congratulations on the new job. And I um, wanted to thank everybody from Macomb Baptist Church and congratulations. And thank you um, for your participation in the community. And thank you for the prayers that we could feel that you um, were, were there saying tonight. And, uh, and with that, everybody have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, and make an additional comment regarding the upcoming election, and that is the Chesterfield Election Commission will be holding our public accuracy test this Friday at 10 a.m. here at the township offices. And what that is is that is an opportunity for the public to see us test and um, confirm the accuracy and proper operation of, of our election tabulators. Um, there's been a lot of concern about that in prior years about uh, the tabulators and if they are accurate and, and so on and so forth. Uh, every, every election we are required to have a public accuracy test that the public can see and we will take, that will take place this Friday in this room at 10 a.m. on October 29th. So I'd um, like to add that. 
In addition, I would just like to simply add that um, former Supervisor Jim Ellis, a lot has been said about him. I'd just like to give you my impressions. I met uh, Mr. Ellis uh, more than a dozen years ago. I moved here about 20 years ago and um, met him his, during his first term in office. And um, Jim and I had different political opinions, obviously had some spirited conversations, uh, but um, we always were cordial with each other. And uh, he was an absolute gentleman, uh, always. Uh, and even many people have said, even after he was no longer in office, if he would see me shopping at Kroger, uh, you know, he'd stop and give me a hug and ask how things were going. And um, just, you know, the, you don't find, they don't make them like that anymore. Uh, unfortunately, so much. Uh, I like to think that there are some out there, but Jim was really a very special person, and the fact that he really did love people, he loved this community, and he served this community with distinction um, for eight years as the supervisor. So um, I will miss him as well, and uh, Chesterfield had a tremendous asset, a tremendously valuable person. We lost him, but we will always remember him. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Thank you, Clerk Perry. I'm just going to make few comments myself. <clears throat> the, uh, the Brandenburg Park acquisition is still in, in uh, process and underway. We had a very positive meeting today with one of the legislative aides for the governor and uh, progress is being made and I hope to get uh, some conclusion or direction uh, uh, in the coming, uh, before the end of the year. And again, uh, I want to thank uh, Representative Hornberger and uh, also the legislative aide from uh, the governor's office today that uh, got us to where we are to um, uh, this position anyways. Um, the community center is open and we had a great opening event as has been stated by several. Please stop in and take a look. Um, the Parks and Rec Department is, uh, is uh, very busy uh, expanding their programming and um, the, the, we will stand uh, with open arms with the library should uh, they need to seek an alternative. Uh, location so that discussion will take place also should it uh, that need arise um, I want to apologize uh, and again um, the budget process a couple of a couple of things changed and I, I, I didn't realize it until today um, maybe my messaging for the budget process internally changed and trustee Vosberg I, I called you on it um, it, it, there, it's more of an electronic version we do have BSNA so you have the current uh, budget proposed budget that we're working on within an, an electronic system. And then also you have the, uh, the expanded five years added, which uh, I didn't realize today after we checked and uh, there's uh, some accessibility issues for BSNA that we probably need to get to you so you can see. Um, but that budget process has been underway since uh, May and June and it continues to uh, develop and, and uh, it's, a, it's a moving, uh, growing document. Um, and a retracting document. We're taking things out. The plan, uh, along with our capital improvement plan, uh, is to have it in front of the board uh, here in November and for approval. And uh, my door is open if there's any comments or any input that still that you still want to uh, provide to us. Um, and uh, I again, it's a living, breathing document that uh, until we get to the board, we're, uh, we're all ears on. Um, leads into the BSNA uh, program that we are currently implementing and developing throughout the township. It is a process. It is going to take us a couple years to fully get there and get uh, everyone trained and uh, up to speed on it. It is a new technology. Uh, we are focusing on increased use and as I said uh, we need to get some of the trustees access to it so they can they can view it and see it on their computers and we'll work towards that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, Dr. Wagner, uh, we're here to serve you. I, I know you, you, have, you represent your church, but we're here to serve you, and I'm, I appreciate the comments that you gave to the staff. But uh, uh, as I said, uh, we're here to serve you and make sure that uh, we can accommodate you wherever we can. Um, I, I appreciate Trustee Joseph's uh, comments on my campaign treasurer not to go she is an amazing person and she doesn't miss a, a deadline or a beat and I appreciate everything she's done for me and yes, trying to spin up a campaign when you're not a politician. So uh, she's a great person and uh, very thorough. Um, last thing I have to say is about uh, Mr. Ellis and, and uh, all of you have said everything. There, You could go on and on, but uh, in my closing comments and conversation with him, as uh, Clerk Barry pointed out, 
he had a respect of each and every one of you. He, and that's what he kept telling me. Just respect everybody. Respect their opinions. You don't have to agree with them, but you have to respect them, where they come from. And even in the last conversations I had with him, it was, it was, it, he taught that respect. And it wasn't only for the electeds, but it was for the employees of the township. He could name employees of the township right up until his final day. Um, he was a great friend of mine. Captain McNair and I used to take him and meet him for lunch and have great discussions. Uh, he used to give us stock advice. We did take it. We, some of it we didn't take, but uh, uh, even to his final days, he was still um, interested in the stock market and politics. So he is a great uh, uh, absence to me personally, and I appreciate all of your kind words, and I know the family does too. Um, they, they've echoed those sentiments uh, um, to me. So with that being said, uh, I wish him well, Godspeed, and I will take a motion uh, to adjourn this meeting. We do have a closed session, a brief closed session, so we'll ask everybody when we adjourn the meeting, vacate the hall so we can take care of uh, business. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to enter into closed session. I have a motion Support. by Clerk Berry, supported by Trustee Vosper, yes, tender. Right. Um, to consider the purchase of real property pursuant to Section 8D of the Open Meetings Act.
motion to reopen, uh, re-enter open session. Support. I have a motion by Clerk Barry, supported by Trustee Domingue to return to open session. At 8.34. Clerk Barry, would you call the roll? Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Domingue. Aye. Trustee Anderson. Aye. Trustee Joseph. Aye. Trustee Vosberg. Aye. Treasurer Elliott. Aye. Supervisor Kirsten. Aye. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the supervisor to engage the township attorney to uh, craft an agreement to purchase real estate as discussed in closed session. We have a motion by Clerk Berry, supported by Trustee Domingue. Um, Clerk Berry, would you call the roll? Clerk Barry, aye. Trustee Domingue, aye. Trustee Anderson, aye. Trustee Joseph, aye. Trustee Vosberg, aye. Treasurer Elliott, aye. Supervisor Kirsten, aye. Item 14 adjournments. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh. Motion by Tr Trustee Vosberg, supported by Trustee Domingue, to adjourn the meeting at 8:34. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting's adjourned. 8:34.